Hey folks, this is Riker with another Diablo lore video. In today's episode, we discuss the Haradrim, a brotherhood of mages sent to capture the three prime evils loose upon the world of Sanctuary. This is part 10 in a series in which we explore the major players in the world of Diablo, from the Nephilim to Tyriel to Deckard Cain to Diablo himself. And we give a crash course on what exactly is going on story-wise in this game series. Feel free to check out our previous episodes if you haven't, and be sure to have subscription notifications turned on to be alerted the moment a new lore video goes live in another year. Yikes, that's uh, huh. <laughs> Time really flies. In our last episode, we discussed the dark Exile, a great revolution in the burning hells in which the lesser evils overthrew the prime evils and exiled them to Sanctuary. Now, thankfully for Sanctuary, it seems that the World Stone, that giant crystal under Mount Ariat, was protecting Sanctuary from otherworldly forces to an extent. The three prime evils were able to exist on Sanctuary for decades, but in weakened form. However, despite being unable to attain full power, they nonetheless were able to spread terror, hatred, and destruction wherever they went. And it took about 40 years for the Archangel Tyriel to realize what was going on. Talk about being slow on the uptake. My stomach feels strange. Now let's remember, the Sin War ended with the forces of Heaven and Hell agreeing to not interfere with the affairs of mortals. And of course you can trust demons to honor their word. Among the angels there had been a big debate as to whether or not Sanctuary and humanity should be destroyed. Some thought that humans, being the descendants of the unholy union of angel and demon, could not be trusted due to their diabolical heritage. Or at best they thought that humanity would be leveraged as a weapon against the high heavens in order to allow the forces of hell to finally win the eternal conflict, at which point they'd have to rename it. So now Tyriel, seeing the three prime evils stomping around Sanctuary like toddlers in a playground, becomes concerned. The other angels don't know about this because he's apparently the only one who's given enough of a damn about humanity to keep an eye on Sanctuary. Or maybe he was the one appointed to keep an eye on Sanctuary, and he just realized he dozed off for 40 years and... All hell has broken loose. Some hell has broken loose. Tyriel realizes it's pretty alarming that the prime evils are around making trouble, but if he tells the other angels, will they decide that enough is enough? The only way to stop these pesky prime evils from their annoying antics is to destroy all of humanity. So rather than party up with his fellow angels and go on a boss run, Tyriel decides he'll go at this solo. Or rather that he would subcontract this quest so that his brethren would not notice his absence. To that end, Tyriel founds the Brotherhood of the Haradrim to hunt down and capture the Prime Evils. Also known as the Order, also known as the Crusaders of Light, despite not being Crusaders, the Haradrim were founded roughly 260 years before the events of Diablo 1. A brotherhood of mages and wizards, the Order's most basic tenet was stand for justice and light. And get the... Ki kill, kill the Prime Evils. So Tyriel recruited members of the various mage clans of the East, specifically seven mages to be the founding members of the Haradrim, with each of the seven representing one of the remaining mage clans, including the Vigerai, the Amuit, the Tan, and the Enid. The mages selected were those deemed most likely to succeed on the mission, which I don't know why that needed to be specified. Would we have otherwise thought that Tyriel would have picked, what, the sexiest mages? He appointed the mage Talrasha as their leader. And other members included Nor Tiraj, a Vigerai mage, Jared Kane, ancestor to Deckard Kane, Zoltan Kuhl of the Aeneid mage clan, known for its mastery of transmutation, and Kuhl himself had a great talent for alchemy, Ibn Fad, who we know nothing about, and other members whose names were not important enough to make it into the history books. Now, Tyriel's plan was a little better than simply Hey, go 
Go get them primevals. No, he had prepared long ago special artifacts that could be used to capture the primevals. Poke- uh, soul stones. Three gems, shards from the world stone itself, created to contain the essence of the primevals. An amber soul stone was meant to trap Bale. A sapphire soul stone meant to trap Mephisto and a ruby soul stone was meant to trap Diablo. Tyriel gave the soul stones to the Haradrim, entrusting Zoltan Kool to carry them, since his resume made him seem best suited to handling magical artifacts. And Kool found himself fascinated by these soul stones. He'd stay awake late at night, experimenting on them and documenting their properties. And so the hunt for the primevals began. And as the hunt went on over time, over the years, Zoltan Kool changed. Whether it was the soul stones that changed him or the quest itself, something was taking a psychological toll on him. If you could believe it, he apparently used to be a really cheerful, upbeat kind of guy. But like an enthusiastic young hire, manacled to a desk job in a cubicle for 10 years, Cool slowly transformed into an emotionless husk. Now the soul stones were inexplicably attuned to the three prime evils, which made it a lot easier for the Haradrim to track them down. Mephisto was the first of the three to be captured, roughly 45 years after his exile. The Haradrim caught him around one of the urban centers of Kejistan, and after a fight that cost many innocent lives, the Haradrim managed to defeat Mephisto and trap him in the Soul Stone. The Haradrim needed to continue the hunt, but they also needed to keep the Soul Stone safe somewhere. Talrasha felt that the only people who could be trusted to guard the Soul Stone were the Zakarum, the religious order founded by Akrat, which we've previously discussed. So Mephisto's Soul Stone was taken to Kurast and was entrusted to the Zakarum for safekeeping. The Zakarum buried Mephisto beneath the temple city Travinkle, the headquarters of the Church of Zakarum, which we visit in Diablo 2's Act 3. Meanwhile, Bale and Diablo fled west across the Twin Seas to the western continent, into the deserts of Aranach, chased by the Haradrim. Bale temporarily hid in the city of Lutgolain, and Tal Rasha had the Haradrim wait him out, assuming he would eventually flee Lutgolain. Tal Rasha knew that if they confronted him in the city, there would once again be civilian casualties, like what happened with Mephisto. After three days, as expected, Bale fled into the desert, north. That's when the Haradrim struck. While the Haradrim won the ensuing battle, Bale's soul stone was destroyed before they can trap him in it. The Haradrim nonetheless tried to trap Bale into the largest shard remaining of the soul stone. And while they succeeded, it was clear that this would only work in the short term. The Haradrim theorized that a human body might be able to contain the essence of Bale by fusing the soul stone into their body. But then the host would have to fight a constant battle to contain the demon for the rest of eternity. Talrasha immediately volunteered. Then, in a veritable deus ex machina, Tyriel appeared to help them with this new plan. He led the Haradrim towards seven ancient tombs deep in the desert and instructed them to build a binding stone etched with magical runes of containment within one of those tombs. Talrasha then ordered his brethren to craft unbreakable chains and secure him to the binding stone. And then Tyriel completed the prison by stabbing the soul stone shard into Talrasha's heart, filling the mage with the spirit of Baal. With heavy hearts, the Haradrim sealed the chamber and left their leader behind. Over time, the other six tombs would become the final resting places of other Haradric mages, and the area would become known as the Canyon of the Magi. With Tal Rasha gone, Jared Kane became the new leader of the Haradrim, and the mages continued on towards their final target, Diablo. After nine more years, their hunt took them to Honduras, where they faced Diablo and his demonic army, vanquished him, and trapped him in the final soul stone. They hid that soul stone in a labyrinthine cave system and built a monastery atop it, and a series of catacombs within the caves. From this Haradric monastery, the Haradrim would continue to safeguard Diablo's soul stone. They'd bury their fellow brothers within the monastery, store weapons there that they'd used in the hunt against the three, and over generations, small villages would crop up near and around the monastery, until it would one day become known as Tristram Cathedral. But more on that in a future episode. Now the Haradrim had served their purpose. The primevals had been captured and contained. So that begged the question, what now?
some members of the Haradrim decided that they would continue to seek out and hunt down evil. Others decided that retirement sounds nice. And those that decided to remain under the leadership of Jared Kane saw the organization begin to formalize itself into a group of lore keepers and guardians. Once an order of nomadic warrior mages, the Haradrim over time transitioned into a society of academic researchers. Over the ages, their numbers dwindled and the Haradrim faded into obscurity. But it turns out that their quest was not truly over. The prime evils had actually planned to be captured in the Soul Stones all along. And it turns out that one of the Haradrim did not fade into obscurity so easily. Zoltan Kool. What diabolical plan had the prime evils hatched? What traitorous angel made this entire plan possible? What dark path awaited? Zoltan Cool. All these questions and more will be answered as we continue to explore this Diablo lore series. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join. Rikers Raiders, for more Diablo content.